on to the next and then we'll uh, i think dipani is almost finishing her talk but yes we'll give her time and i will try again after amit porwal amit are you ready yeah am i audible sir <coughs> yes perfect go ahead yeah so it's my proud privilege to be part of this ais international of music conclave and especially the opponents of sri lanka association so i'm going to talk on managing of blood failure with raised iop so we all know that tuberculosis is a surgical treatment of choice for patient with glaucoma and the overall success rate is reasonably high but there are a proportional of procedures which fail uh, uh, amit 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 go into yeah. slide show mode it is in the i am in the slide show mode uh, we are seeing your uh, uh, All, all, all your slides. Oh, and uh, only the first slide. I am in the slide show mode. I think uh, the last sir, time also the same problem was sorry, there. Sorry, sir. Sir, please uh, unshare your screen. First yeah, okay. Yeah. Now open your PPT and make it full screen. My PPT is open and it is in full screen only. Now share. Now share. Now share, Now share only full screen, not your PPT. But when I make full screen, I have to put escape and then go to. No 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 no. No no. You can switch screens. No, you can put it on full screen. Switch screen. Uh, press then... window. Press window press? button. Window yeah. button. Then you see zoom icon uh, or zoom icon, and share share your screen. Window button. I don't see any zoom icon. No. Sir, can you try sharing again? Uh, maybe you try sharing again, and then we can put it into the slideshow mode. That's what I did, uh, but that is a problem. No, I, I, can... I, I, I think, uh, Doctor Amit, you've got to be on full screen and then share. But if you otherwise, you can't. Um... See, if I do full screen. No, you, so you go then... to full screen. No, no, you go to yeah. full screen, and then you, okay. uh, you uh, right click, and it says switch. There's a, there's a switch. There's an icon saying screen. And then you can maintain on your full screen, and you can go to Zoom from there. Then, see screen, yeah, yeah. In the screen, there is white screen. But look, switch, what's the last switch, option? Switch exactly, program. switch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So switch now, program. Yeah. So, yeah. Click on Thank that. You. Thank okay. you. Okay, I, I got it. And then you can go back and share your screen. Now. Come on to the Zoom call and share your screen. I got it. So, am I? Is it visible now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank, okay. Thanks thank a lot. You. Thanks a lot for the help and guidance. So post tuberculosis, we look at basically the IOP, the anterior chamber depth, and the blood. So what are the features we look? Whether the IOP is high or low, whether the AC is deep or shallow, and whether the blood is flat or encysted. So now the problem is the slide doesn't move. So I think uh, uh, instead of uh, wasting the time, what I would like to do is I'll go to my slide share only. Okay, and uh, I'll instead of full full PPT, I'll just share the slides each. Yeah. So now uh, I think uh, what I'll yeah. do is I'll yeah, go ahead. Maximum. Yeah, I'll go ahead with this only. No problem. So, Uh, instead of wasting the time. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So when you look at the failing or a failed that you look for an increased vascularity or the cox two vessels, whether the IOP is high, if the IOP is high within the first one month, if the blood is encapsulated or a high tumor appearance blood, or if the blood is flat and there is an absence of microcysts, then these are the features which are having a which are of failed or a failing blood. When the raised IOP with TPC, what you do basically the reasons can be intraocular because of internal obstruction by blood, fibrinous clot, iris, or the vitreous. There can be ocular cause due to fibroblastic proliferation, and there can be an extraocular tight skin in the suture. So when you have an uncontrolled IOP and TPC, always do colonoscopy first. Look for the obstruction to flow at the sclerotic bony site. Obstruction with mild fibrin and minimal blood is transient and does not need any intervention. But if the internal ostium is obstructed with iris or vitreous incarceration or dense fibrinous membrane, you should consider laser internal revision or surgical intervention. And if there is dense blood or fibrinous clot which is occluding the fistula, you should always consider tissue plasminogen activator. And the next step is to digital ocular compression. What are the indications? Whether you have an early post-operative elevated IOP and flat blood, 
Basically, by doing this, you separate the edge of the spherical flap by expanding the subpendal space. This decreases the IOP and elevates the flap, and it is not effective in block fistula. You have to make sure that the fistula is not blocked. Technique of digital compression, you should apply a slow and steady pressure for 15 seconds. It is applied with the index finger to the inferior sclera to the lower lid, or you can apply it to the sclera posterior adjacent to the middle to the upper lid. A focal compression with a motion quantitative applicator at the edge of the sclera flap also can be done. Now, what we, uh, what we look for when you do a digital compression, you should look for the AC depth, the height of the flap, and the IOP, you should be noted. If successful, then it has to be repeated several times. And if the IOP remains high, you should remove, uh, remove the releasable uh, suture or laser suture lysis as to be considered. Now, coming to the releasable suture, uh, I'm just showing the video in this only. Uh, this technique of uh, basically uh, how do you put the releasable suture. Now, what are the advantages? It allows tight closure of the sterile plan. The upper flow can be increased post operatively, and the externalized suture can be removed easily. So, how do you apply the little suture? You pass a tensile suture uh, parallel to the limbus into the clear cornea and from the, the clear cornea into a perpendicular the limbus into the sterile flap. And then from the sterile flap into the intact sclera. Now, once this is done, a loop is created over the sterile flap. Like you take four throws and pass these throws over the loop which is created on the sterile flap. So, a shoeless manner knot is created. And this is how you put a little suture. You can see that I'm passing the suture into from the sterile flap into this entire sphere. A loop is there on the sterile flap, and then I'm going to pass this four throws. So removal of the removable suture also is very easy. You have an exposed end, you can see here the two exposed, the two removal sutures put the two exposed end on the uh, clear cornea near the limbus. You can see this exposed end over here. So you just have to release this suture with the help of a 26 gauge needle. So when the suture is free, then you can just try to pull up with the uh, plane forces and tighten the blood, uh, the, the filtration of the blood. So this can be done in the OPD, the, the, the liver switch. Coming next, uh, next is argon laser suture lysis. The timing of this liver suture or the argon laser suture lysis is very important. To be expected uh, within the first two weeks after the surgery without anti light. And if you're using an anti light, you will for several months after the surgery. Conservative stepwise approach is done and wherein one suture is cut at a time. The technique basically use a topical anesthesia. You can use the hospitals of the rich lens. This lens uh, flattens and blanches the overlying connectava. You can also use the central button edge of the Zeus as one lens. And you can see in this video that uh, you should aim the aiming of the laser on this suture and give the shots. And within the two or three shots, this suture can be uh, uh, can be trimmed off. Now, why? What is the reason for basically this uh, fading depth? It's a rapid wound healing response, which is there where there is subcranial fibrosis. The incidence of the phase is approximately 20% in the early post of the period and 30 to 50 percent in the late post of the period. Subcranial sanctification of the blood usually occurs in the first six months after the surgery and is seen in 10 to 20 patients after trap. So antimetabolites play a very important role. It inhibits fibrosis proliferation. We have two antimetabolites, the mitomycin C and 5 which we commonly use. So mitomycin C is 100 times more potent than 5 q and kills cells of uh, all the cells, regardless of the phase in the cell cycle, you can use a subcranial injection of 0.02 to 0.04 mg per 0.1 ml or a topical drop of 0.02 percent four times a day for two weeks. 5 fu inhibits only the fibrosis proliferation and kills only the dividing cells. You can use a subcranial injection of 5 fu that is 5 mg per 0.1 ml, total dosage being 15 to 15 mg in three weeks' time. And you should always watch for blood features, organ complications, and wound leak when you're using these antimetabolites. Now, coming to the blood needling, basically the indications are bearing the when calculated or the flat or flat blood. Now, the goal of the needling is to re establish the fistula for the anti chamber to a subcranial blood where a case tumor may be re -observed. So, this is a uh, video demonstrating the uh, blood needling being per per performed with OPD on the slit lamp. Uh, you can see that I'm um, taking a 29 gauge needle, and uh, this needle is passed about 5 millimeter or uh, 5 to 7 millimeters away from the lateral margin of the blood. And then, with the two and pro motion, the subcranial fibrous tissue is uh, cut, and then you can go through the subscleral uh, flap and then into the anterior chamber also. And you have to make sure that uh, you avoid as much as possible any large major feeder vessels. You don't want any bleeding inside the blood, but sometimes you can't help it, and there can be a bleeding. So, you can see that the blood bleeding is performed on the slit lamp. And uh, the blood is being formed as I'm doing the subcranial, as I'm trimming off the subcranial fabrics. And the bottom picture shows the existed blood, and this is a uh, post needling how the picture looks. Again, this is a debatable issue whether you want to do a blood needling in the OPD or in the OR. So it is personal choice. Uh, this debate is never ending. And this is another video of blood needling being performed into the OT with mitomycin C. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm passing a stage suture 
into the clear cornea with the 60 vitrel now why this stay suture is important because you are doing to do in tropical low body but block so a stay suture will help you expose the posterior edge of the blade as much as possible once the stay suture is in the eye is put on the uh, pull down uh, inferiorly and so the superior part of the blade and the posterior edge of the blade is exposed you can give the uh, subcutaneous injection of mitomycin as mentioned earlier the dose so you can see that i'm giving the subcutaneous injection as much posteriorly as possible then uh, leave the uh, leave it uh, wait have a waiting period of what four to five minutes and then brush it out with the water mitomycin is there brush it out or iron it out as much posteriorly as possible and then uh, with the help of a 26 gauge needle or I personally feel a 26 gauge needle is better than any other needle because the brittleness of the strength of the 26 gauge needle is better when you are doing the, when you want the subcutaneous passages to be trimmed off or cut off. So uh, bend the 26 gauge needle in the L shaped form, and as I mentioned earlier also, about uh, five to seven millimeters laterally from the lateral edge of the uh, blade, you can invade into the subcutaneous space, and with the two and four motion, you can uh, cut all the fibrous tissue. So I'm just following this video a bit. You can see that the blood is being formed, and now I'm entering into the anterior chamber to the internal ostium. So the moment I enter into the anterior uh, uh, internal ostium, the blood is uh, nicely formed. Then you can reform the anterior chamber by making a side foot and uh, doing a stromal hydration and check the patency of the blood also. So you can see I've made a side foot now. I'm injecting uh, BSS into the anterior chamber, and the blood is the patency is checked. So this is the way you want to do the blood needling, and uh, then coming to the next slide, basically I'm showing this a photograph. the blood needling which was shown in the ot this is the a sosity photograph and the anti second photograph and post needling one we follow how this is how the blood looks and the six one follow this is how we diffuse blood looks so basically uh, change in the appearance of the blood is seen during or soon after the needling antibody steroid drops has to be instituted digital massage has to be instituted early and continued for long term needling can be accompanied with mitomycin or pyru as i told earlier uh, along with lidocaine It can be given superior temporally before the needle, uh, before the needling, and then massage for two to five minutes. Blood with thick scar and quick failure. We can use mitomycin while those that take a bit longer and fail slowly may respond adequately to pyru. So the key to successful postural management is early recognition and correct selection and timing of the various intervention procedures. Thank you, and I'm sorry for the technical glitch which occurred. I'm facing this for the last few days. Uh, okay. Anyhow, I think uh, the slides were visible and it was informative.